Um, hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 39 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 40 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm for David himself. Brief description. With expectation I have waited for the Lord, and he was attentive to me. And he heard my prayers, and brought me out of the pit of misery and the mire of dregs, and he set my feet upon a rock, and directed my steps, and he put a new canticle into my mouth, a song to our God. Because I was patient and had faith in the Lord, he gave me many new reasons to celebrate, and supplied me with joy, guidance, and safety. Many shall see, and shall fear, and they shall hope in the Lord. Many people who experience great fear turn to God in their times of trouble. Blessed is the man whose trust is in the name of the Lord, and who hath not had regard to vanities and lying follies. While temporary things can provide temporary comforts on the road to heaven, we should never place too much value or trust in them. We always need to keep the will of God foremost in mind. Thou hast multiplied thy wonderful works, O Lord my God, and in thy thoughts there is no one like to thee. I have declared, and I have spoken, they are multiplied above number. God has done and created so many amazing things that even if we tried, we could never thank him for all of them, or even recognize them all. Sacrifice and oblation thou didst not desire, but thou hast pierced ears for me. Burnt offerings and sin offerings thou didst not require. Offerings and sacrifices aren't really the way that God wants to know us. He'd prefer to be close to us through a perfect state of being, like heaven. Then said I, Behold, I come. In the head of the book it is written of me that I should do thy will. O my God, I have desired it, and thy law is in the midst of my heart. I have declared thy justice in a great church. Lo, I will not restrain my lips, O Lord, thou knowest it. I want to always do God's will, follow his laws, and worship him in a great way, which he can appreciate. I have not hid thy justice within my heart. I have declared thy truth and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy mercy and thy truth from a great council. I refuse to put aside the topic of God and his true teachings, even when pressured to do so by powerful people. Withhold not thou, O Lord, thy tender mercies from me. Thy mercy and thy truth have always upheld me. It's only because of the mercy of God that any of us have any hope for eternal life at all. For evils without number have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I was not able to see. They are multiplied above the hairs of my head, and my heart hath forsaken me. Our sins are numerous, in most cases more than we can count, and even our own thoughts sometimes lead us into sin. Remember, to the ancient Israelites the word heart implied the mind. However, while we can all say this, David's sins were probably less numerous than ours. The fact that he can say this as well should make each of us question the choices we've made in our own lives. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. Look down, O Lord, to help me. Let them be confounded and ashamed altogether that seek after my soul to take it away. Let them be turned backward and be ashamed that desire evils to me. Please save us and make people who wish harm on us or wish to make us sin ashamed of having done so. Let them immediately bear their confusion that say to me, "'Tis well, tis well." Here, David is asking God to confuse a certain group of people. However, the phrase "'tis well' is ambiguous without context. Perhaps these people are yes-men, flattering his ears while secretly plotting against him. They might be people who are happy when they see him suffering, or who are seeking personal gain through him, and therefore don't see any problem with trying to lead him astray or cause him some other kind of harm. At the very least, we know that these are people who don't have David's well-being in mind when they make these decisions. It's better for them to be confused so that David and we can continue to serve God unimpeded. Let all that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee, and let such as love thy salvation say always, The Lord be magnified. May everyone who looks for the Lord and wants to receive his salvation, truth, and guidance find them, 
and be happy and joyful in what they find, so that God will be more easily visible to people. But I am a beggar and poor. The Lord is careful for me. Thou art my helper and my protector. O oh, my God, be not slack. Obviously, what David means here is not economic poverty, but rather that he doesn't know God nearly as well as he wants to. Like him, we should also seek to know God better and plead for the help and protection of God with urgency. Uh, that's all for now, so keep asking questions and thanks for watching.